Are you interested in game design? Well, here's your chance to learn from someone who's seen it all. Today, you're going to hear five hard-won lessons from how to succeed in the games industry from veteran game designer Steve Moretzky. Be sure to stick around to the end to hear Steve's vote for the number one mistake that even smart game studios make. Steve Moretzky's career in games started in 1984 when he wrote text adventure games for the pioneering company Infocom, including working on Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy with Douglas Adams. Over the years, Steve has designed popular casual games for casinos, for the Game Show Network, on Facebook, and many on mobile. Here are Steve's five tips for succeeding in the games industry. Think about the right amount of innovation. Making games that are just a clone of something that's already out there is not a recipe for success. And making a game that's wildly innovative may be a recipe for success, but with a super, super low hit rate. Unless, you know, you're planning on having lots of shots on goals, you really want to maximize your chance of having a success with a very few number of shots on goals. And the way to do that is finding the real sweet spot of having a little bit of innovation, but still a lot of familiarity. A good example might be homescapes or gardenscapes, really. You know, taking a very well-known and very well-loved genre in in terms of match three and then combining that with a decorative metagame that felt very new. And so that was, I think, a good example of having enough familiarity that people could pick up the game and not feel like they had to learn too much to know how to play it, but enough new that it did feel like something new and not just a clone of Candy Crush or other successful match three games of its time. Nowadays, we talk about the golden cohort, you know, that when you put out a game at the very beginning of when that game is released, you're going to attract the customers who are most attuned to whatever that game is. The first time they see the ad, they're like, I'm in. And if you put out a crappy game, planning to fix it later, you're going to immediately turn off the people who you least want to turn off. Until Facebook came along in 2007, 2008, the Facebook audience was growing so fast and you could put out almost anything and have it succeed. The kind of golden cohort didn't matter because sure, if you put out a game that was still like super rough and a million people played it and got turned off by it, you know, another million people were joining Facebook next week and the week after. So it really lent itself to just getting stuff out as quickly as possible and polishing it and adding features later. There was such an interesting dynamic between Playdom and Zynga, which were the top two companies in the market. And pretty much the Playdom attitude was just look at everything that Zynga does and then just do the same thing because they have five times as many people and resources as we have. And so they're presumably A-B testing and making all the right decisions about everything. And therefore, why should we waste time kind of reinventing the wheel? Just look at what they're doing and copy it. But later when I would talk to people at Zynga, they were like, oh no, we didn't know what we were doing. <laughs> and so anyone copying us was ridiculous because, you know, we were as much clueless as you were. Enjoying this video? Give it a like. It'll help us make more videos like this. So basically the main product at GSN was GSN Casino, which at one point was a top 10 mobile game on both Android and on iOS. Instead of adding more features, basically management just wanted us to add more slots. I'd say ironically, the death knell was when we launched our most successful slot game within GSN Casino, which was based on the most successful slot in land-based casinos, which is called Buffalo. But it was basically an imitation of that game and it did terrifically. So, you know, it represented a big bump in revenue. And that wasn't surprising because it was an imitation of the most successful slot in the real world. But management said, oh, that was great. Okay, keep doing that like every month. There's only one best performing slot in the world to imitate, right? <laughs> it's sort of like one of those things you just can't repeat a second time. We could obviously go down the list and imitate the second most successful slot and the third most successful slot, but obviously with diminishing results. Anyway, so they got increasingly impatient. The biggest one is just not killing ideas, just going with an idea after it has shown that it's not working 
and just pouring more time in it and pouring more money into it. And it ends up dying a year later instead of a month, you know, in when it became obvious that it was not an idea that was working. And so, yeah, I think it's a matter of teams falling in love with their baby. And it is very hard to say, this isn't working, let's kill it. But that is the number one mistake. If you enjoyed these tips from Steve Moretzky, you'll love our full interview with him right here. And to learn how you can level up your product design skills with game design, go to gamethinking.io. The link is in the description. Let's get smarter together. I'll see you next week.